foremost upon all of you, but secondly, and really importantly, on a small number of individuals who on behalf of all have done more than their share. And there, there are a few such individuals I could say in the hall today who one way or another have taken what has been a singular opportunity to help, to help GIST and uh, patients with GIST and then you know, by proxy to help patients with other sorts of cancer and made sure that we in the research field did not drop the ball. So with incredible appreciation, Tanya. It's wonderful, I'm looking at all these things here. I don't have anything. <laughs> uh, as uh, Jonathan has actually introduced me, my name is Tanya Stutman. I am the GIST Cancer Research Fund chairperson, but more importantly, I think, for me, for myself, is that I am a GIST patient myself. Although I have been a survivor for over 10 years, I do still have humors in my liver, which are inoperable, but I am very stable on taking the medication, the first line, which is uh, Glivec, 600 milligrams, and that has actually kept me alive. Um, I want to thank all of you also for taking the trips from different directions to be here today. And uh, I want to thank you, the doctors and the researchers that have been part of these presentations. Um, this is not uh, something that uh, we basically chose to go this path by having the presentations in different facilities that we support and invite everyone to participate. The reason for it is very easy to send a check or to handle a check. But our focus in, in our organization was actually to make sure that we could help not only fundraising, which is the most important uh, focus in our, in, in our organization, but also to educate, bring awareness, um, and get the GIS community, the GIS family together uh, and interact with all the doctors and all the researchers. They are basically our lifelines. Uh, that said and done, uh, GIS Cancer Research Fund, ha actually myself, over 10 years ago, when I was actually diagnosed, and of course I was diagnosed uh, with leomarsarcoma, but it was coincidental that it was found. And the other thing was is that, of course, for all the GIS patients here, uh, we know that that just is something that it's found coincidentally and accidentally. And uh, the same thing happened to me. Um, while I was on the operating table, of course, for a total hysterectomy, they found that I had my tumor on my small bowel, and the doctor had to consult with another doctor. After my stay in the hospital, of course, I was told to go home and get my life in order because I only had one year to live. So with all that said and done, of course, as a human being, I went through all the steps that one does when is faced with their own mortality. But at the same time, I basically said to myself and felt that I felt compelled to do something, not only so much for myself, but maybe I could try to do something so that others that will come behind me will be able to benefit from this organization. And um, lo and behold, of course, after the one year was over, I was still around, thank God for that, uh, with no researchers and no um, uh, drugs and no clinical trials. I was very persistent on, and compelled to try to do something to make the difference. And so it would be a close to almost three years before I entered the clinical trial, phase two and Fox Chase Cancer Center. And of course, the first one opened in Dana Farber, and George was kind enough to actually send me an email and say, don't give up. There's going to be other trials opening, and just keep on hoping. This is something that is very you know, difficult for just patients, because when you are robbed of 
and give it a death sentence and, and robbed of the most important thing in anyone's life, which is hope, uh, facing new mortality is a very difficult time to go through. But even so, in these difficult times, I decided to go knocking on doors, asking for 5 and $10, and to try to organize a walk for a cure for a cancer that was rare and that no one even knew about it or heard of. Uh, our first walk was 2001. Uh, it actually was 9-16, right after 9-11. We didn't even think they were going to have anyone come. But for our surprise, and to our surprise, we had about 100 patients. We raised $23,000. The second thing that I think is very important that uh, through our efforts in Just Cancer Research Fund, we've tried to basically bring awareness and do the fundraising and, and basically throughout the country and also internationally. We have now a lot of walks in different states and events in uh, different uh, states. As a matter of fact, we have uh, a very good friend of mine, Wendy Kapilov, who husband has just since been treated in Dana Farber, who is also the coordinated in Atlanta, Georgia. For, uh, this will be actually the, her fourth year. We also have an international bike ride who is going to take place next year in South Africa, and it will be basically um, between 40 to 70 riders from all over the world. The other thing that is very important for you to know is that um, we know our business. We are a family. All the the members of the Just Cancer Research Fund are all just patients as well as caregivers and also one person that lost his sister a few years ago at age 40 to just. And so we basically are committed, determined, and we will not take an answer of a no. We actually uh, declared war on just, uh, even though the war on cancer was declared many years ago, but we declare war on GIST. Uh, the thing about uh, GIST Cancer Research Fund is that uh, my, my office is actually my oldest daughter's bedroom. I don't have a secretary, and so we don't have any overhead administrative costs, which you need to know. Um, also, what is so wonderful about all the facilities that we have actually um, uh, partnered with uh, is that uh, we developed uh, where is uh, a given thing that no overhead administrative cost should be taken out from the uh, research uh, lab and the researchers. They are doing everything in their power and working effortless to find a cure for us. So, and that is, is a very important thing because normally 80% usually goes to overhead administrative costs when you donate to any kind of cancer. Um, we need to basically stay together, stand by uh, each other's side, you know, and continue supporting uh, all these nights from all the facilities, the nights around the table, as I might call it, in the Camelot, because without them, we couldn't possible um, uh, go forward and find a cure. And the truth of the matter is, yes, uh, we cannot really wait for 10 years. Um, we do need to really um, um, think straight, focus on what we could do as one to very support all of the researchers. We don't have a crystal ball to basically allow, you know, to see who and when and all that, it's the answers will be coming. But the one good thing that you all have to know is that all researchers that work on GIST and all the doctors and the clinical trials, they're very uh, strong bonded by the co collaboration that they have, all of them, between all of their projects. It's not repetitious. So. With that said and done, uh, first of all, also I would like to introduce another director on board of GIST Cancer Research Fund, uh, Dr. John Leonard. He is right up front. And we have other uh, members who couldn't make it to the presentation. My husband, who is the treasurer of uh, GIST Cancer Research Fund. And I would implore you 
to support these efforts uh, because every dollar counts in one life lost is one life lost too many. So I just wanted to say something that was very funny because about the fact that sometimes we lose our <laughs> memory kind of thing, but I call it the glivic moment. <laughs> so when I put the whole gallon of milk in the cabinet, I know I have a glivic moment. <laughs> I'm not a professional speaker, but when we started this 10 years ago, like she said, we raised $23,000. Last year we raised over a million dollars. This year it wasn't a, we weren't as successful because the economy wasn't that good. We raised $730,000. Last year we, 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 give, we give basically to five different facilities that do research. We give to Fox Chase in Philadelphia, University of Pittsburgh, OHSU in Portland, which is where we're going, we're flying this Sunday to do a presentation like this, and Memorial Sloan Kettering. And, you know, I feel a little guilty that the check is a little bit less than last year. Last year we gave 165000 this year it's 135000 which if you add it together is 300000 in the last two years. Hopefully. We can quit doing this. We don't want to come back and do it. 100% of all the money that we raise, not one penny, every penny that we raise goes to just research. The money to run the organization is given to us by right. Pfizer and by Novartis, which they, without them we couldn't do this, and they have been a tremendous help. Uh, meanwhile, she's telling me what to say in my ear here. <laughs> It's like having a little bird chirping in your ear there and everything else. Uh, now, what, I, what I wanted to say No, wait, is that now, Tanya, let me finish, okay? <laughs> First of all, there's, there's a lady sitting down here. I'd like her to stand up, okay? Her husband is a GIST patient. Her name is Wendy Kapiloff. She, she runs an event in Atlanta, Georgia. She raised $80,000 this year, and she has no experience or anything except for the last three years that she did it. And uh, so I, I got to give her credit and everything else. <laughs> She flew, in, she flew in here last night just to be here for this presentation and so on down the line. And I would like to not only present Jonathan with this check, you guys sitting back there, come on up here. Come on, you guys that are from his lab, come on, you guys deserve the credit too. Come on up here. Just for a second, come on. These, these guys actually do the research and do the work and everything else under Jonathan's instruction. We had dinner last night with a few of them, and, and they're wonderful, wonderful people. And also, I want to just thank one other person, and I'll finish talking, and I'll present the check. Sue Andrews, who organized this whole thing, she did a tremendous job. Jonathan, now what, you walked away. I've got to give you the check here. <laughs> oh, okay, okay.